I'm Nancy Hennepin from the Department of Nursing. Um, tell me and I will forget, show me and I may remember, involve me and I will understand. Those are not my words, those are the words of Confucius from um, 450 BC. So even then he knew that simulation was going to be part of education and the wave of the future. Now here it is arrived at Towson University in the nursing education department. But we were not the first to introduce simulation. Simulation started with the aviation programs and um, aren't we glad that it did before we found ourselves in seat 19 row, I mean, seat, seat D row 19 and that 737 was coming in for a landing. The um, pilots have had thousands and thousands of hours of simulation preparation and I think you'll all be appreciative that nursing is going to be doing the same thing as well. The nursing edu uh, educators have the challenge of developing innovative ways to teach students to function in technology technologically advanced healthcare environments. Through high and low fidelity simulation, we can support unique opportunities that mirror clinical experiences in controlled settings. Simulation is meant to be a teaching strategy and not just the use of te technology. Simulation scenarios are made to resemble clinical practice through the application, integration of knowledge and skills and critical reasoning. Low fidelity simulation, which I introduce in the nursing foundations lab, students are provided case scenarios and are assigned a role such as the nurse, a patient, a family member, or such as an evaluator, and they evaluate each other. As they work through the scenarios, they learn how to practice the nursing process and sharpen their decision making and reasoning skills. The method requires them to think through information and to come to conclusions and predict outcomes. It's far more effective teaching strategy and a lot more interesting um, than lecture and text. The learner can apply classroom theory into clinical practice where instructors can control the variables and the student can practice until they are proficient. And just as you've been seeing up here, we've been blessed. We moved over into uh, Lithicum Hall this uh, past year, and although many of you who've been in Lithicum Hall before this year might go, oh, that's not so good, we are very <laughs> excited. As you saw in some of the very first slides, we have a 10-bed uh, hospital area that is where the foundations work, and it's very great because the students all now get to work together, the faculty can see them, and they're working on the, the patients or the mannequins and getting to treat them. We were also blessed to have a 10-bed health assessment suite. In the past, we had to bounce back as faculty from room to room, so you really didn't get to concentrate very closely on a group of patients for any length of time. So what you can see here in our health assessment suite is we now have the availability to have the students go through a simulation and be the patient, so they're the smart patient, so they have to know what's going on with the patient, as well as the nurse who's maybe taking their blood pressure, getting their temperature, getting some information from the patient. And so the students, we can sit back and kind of observe them and interact with them as we need to give them a little bit of guidance so they can practice their skills and they can get better at what they're actually doing. Once they leave their first semester of nursing, they can move into the second semester of nursing where I actually do most of my teaching and simulation. Here, we allow the students to be not the student nurse that they are in clinical, in the hospital setting, where by regulations, we have a lot of things that we as faculty have to be right on top of. But we now, in this clinical simulation lab, let them work on a high fidelity mannequin. If you ever want to come by and see it, it's great. It really freaks out a lot of people. They'll walk by this patient or this mannequin will be breathing, they'll be blinking, and it kind of bothers some people. But it's really great because the students are now nurses. They get to make the decisions. They're critically thinking. They get to interact with the patient and have the patient get better or get worse. I think everyone in this room would like to have a student nurse or a nurse who's practiced on the mannequin who may go down the tubes, but guess what? He's plastic, he comes back to life the next time around <laughs> instead of working on you. So it's really great because we give them the experience to be that decision maker without the faculty standing right over their head or over their back saying, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. It really truly develops their critical thinking skills. So you, here is our um, high fidelity simulation room. You can see through the mirror, that's my mannequin, that's my guy who uh, freaks everybody out. I now have, we now have a family. We have some man, some mom, some junior, some baby. We got the whole family. <laughs> so the students there are actually, it looks like a more of a hospital room, a single hospital room where the students actually are going to practice 
And then we can videotape it and they have a chance to then see themselves in a debriefing practice what they're or see what they're doing. So one, it's a great way for us as faculty to go back and say, here, did you see this? You did really great. Thank you.